Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Andrew Creel, an assistant director for admission at the College of Mount St. Vincent. I want to welcome you to our last Meet Your Major webinar featuring Dr. Peter Luthi, who will be discussing the math and data, data analytics at the College of Mount St. Vincent. Uh, it's been a long day, but we have provided tons of information from different professors, along with students and recent graduates from the College of Mount St. Vincent. And to wrap up, wrap up this day, I think there's no other better person to end the day with than Dr. Peter Luthi, and he will now introduce himself and go straight into his presentation. All right, thanks very much, Andrew. Uh, really excited to, uh, to welcome everybody who's interested in math at, at uh, the College of Mount St. Vincent. Uh, excited to, to hopefully have you uh, on campus this coming fall. Um, excited to get back, you know, get back in the classroom. Um, so a little bit about myself. Uh, I went to a small liberal arts college, very similar to, to the Mount. You can kind of see the camel back here. That was our mascot. Um, uh, and yeah, I think the, the small liberal arts college experience is uh, extremely beneficial. You get to um, much more one-on-one -on -one interaction with your professors than you would at a, at a big state school. Um, I, you, know, you can sort of see here, I, I did my PhD at Cornell University. There's like 15,000 students there. You know, obviously a lot, if you really know what you want to do and, and uh, you know, you have, have had a great preparation going to a place like that. It can be really beneficial as, a, as an undergraduate student. In my experience, most students aren't, aren't like that. They don't necessarily know exactly what they want to do. Um, and having that more interactive relationship with your faculty member uh, or your, your professors is really beneficial. Um, so in addition to me, there's two other professors in the department, uh, Viktor Moroshnikov, uh, who came here from the Soviet Union about 30 or 40, I guess about 40 years now, basically. Um, and Amir Niknajad, who uh, joined us from Iran again, uh, actually now close to 50 years ago. Um, and yeah, all, all three, or so certainly the two of them more than me are much more interested in, in uh, sort of applied mathematics, it's, it's uh, utility and more pragmatic and practical problems. Um, well, let me go through a little bit, uh, a little bit here in my presentation. So. We have two majors in our department, mathematics and data analytics. So mathematics, you know, a lot of people sort of ask, still ask me, you know, what can I do with a degree in math? Like, what is that useful for? Uh, it's extremely uh, marketable uh, major. Obviously, math teachers, that's probably most of our students go to go, go on to become uh, math teachers of some kind in New York State. Uh, you have to have a content area degree to become a teacher. And so the, our, our major uh, would enable you to become a teacher in New York State. Uh, but beyond just becoming a you know, teacher, uh, there's all sorts of jobs out there, just none of them have math in the title. So I have a bunch of friends who are quantitative analysts at, at finance uh, institutions like Citibank or um, something like that. Uh, I have friends who are at, you know, actuaries, uh, which is sort of like a merging of mathematics and accounting. Um, and there's tons of other quantitative jobs, including sort of the fastest growing area of the economy is data science. Um, and that, that sort of relates to our second major in the, in the department, which is data analytics. Um, and so a lot of people maybe aren't sure what data science is exactly, um, but it's really this overlap of three different areas. So one is sort of computer science and information technology. Um, so that includes, includes like computer programming, uh, designing algorithms, uh, lots of, you know, the type of stuff that you, uh, you know, might expect Google to be working on. Um, there's also this area of math and statistics. Uh, that's sort of the, you know, certainly the area that I'm strongest in. Um, and then there's this third area in red down at the bottom, which is domain or, or uh, business knowledge. So uh, that would typically be like, maybe you have an interest in, in business, so, or marketing or something like that. Um, becoming a data scientist, you, sort of areas like digital marketing, so companies like Google and Apple, all these major players, they collect all this information about you that's maybe uh, not totally identifying you, doesn't have a name attached to it, but they're trying to, they're trying to give you uh, ads, say, that they want you, they want to give you an ad that you're likely to click on. So they're trying to get as much uh, information about you as they can. So your cell phone collects a tremendous amount of information and processing that information is, is challenging um, if you just treat it like a math problem like you have all sorts of numbers relating to a person you're going to get much less 
uh, utility out of that information than if you know something about business, something about marketing on top of that. So it's really this uh, merging of three different areas. It could be chemistry or biology or physics, all of those different areas. Um, you, you know, depending on what your interests are, you can sort of combine those with a little bit of math, a little bit of statistics, a little bit of computer science. Uh, and there's a huge uh, growth in that in that area of the economy. It's something like, um, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of jobs are going to go unfilled that need to be filled because there's not enough people in the U.S. to fill those jobs. Um, and so they end up hire, you know, getting all sorts of people from overseas to do them. Um, and so, but that's also quite expensive for a company to do if you're going to sponsor somebody with like a J-1 visa uh, uh, or an H-1B visa. Those, those are expensive. So companies want to hire Americans. Uh, we don't produce enough people in America to satisfy the need. Um, but so that's really the, the, you know, forefront of sort of where mathematics is going is, uh, is data science. Um, and I've been, this past year, or past two years, we've been working with a group of colleges um, based in uh, uh, all over the country and also with Google to sort of design a, a introductory three course, a two or three course sequence um, that we've taught for the first year and it's gone, gone really well. So I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to keep that going. All right, so uh, I have a question here from uh, Giovanni Hardy. So uh, how long have I been teaching? So uh, that's an interesting question. As a, as a professional, <laughs> uh, I've been teaching since uh, 2012, I guess. Um, but then I was also teaching as a graduate student before that. So I would say 10, 10 years is probably a fair answer, 10 to 15 years. Um, Um, but so, yeah, connecting back to the, this idea, that, that to me is what, is what uh, uh, I, you know, I hope students will come in, you know, with some, some sort of uh, concept that like, even though, there's, even though a mathematician seems like a make-believe job, there's a huge variety of jobs out there for people with really strong quantitative skills, whether it's in business or, uh, you know, something like marketing, digital marketing, or numerical chemistry, numerical biology, pharmaceutical design. I mean, that, those are the uh, engineering. Those are the types of things that, uh, uh, you know, that a math degree can help prepare you for. Um, so here's just an, an example. This is probably my, my favorite example. So why, you know, what is sort of interesting about uh, uh, yeah, data science or using mathematics so the tools required to do what I'm about to describe, you would have after completing a math degree. So, so what a bunch of researchers uh, did, this is by a researcher named Carlos Bustamante and a whole bunch of co-authors. Uh, they asked about a thousand Europeans where their mother's mother was born. So where, where, her mother, where their mother's mother was from and they collected a genetic sample. And they looked at, they looked at about 100,000 genetic markers and so for each person, they just have a list of a bunch of zeros and ones, basically saying if that person has, that, has a particular gene or not. They use, do something of this technique in, in linear algebra called principal component analysis. But long story short, what they're able to do is from that huge amount of data, each point here, each little, uh, so like this ES or the ITs, all of those, uh, uh, sort of number or points in space that corresponds to a person. The point in space is determined by the total, purely by the genetic information, but it's being colored according to their answer to a question, answer to the question where their mother's mother was from. So from this, they're basically, from just purely genetic information and asking where somebody's mother's mother was from, they can recreate a map of Europe. So that map of Europe is hidden in these people's genes. You can sort of see the purples and uh, blues in the bottom left, that's Spain, Portugal, uh, the sort of red up at the top is Ireland, the pink in the, in the middle is uh, the CH, that's Switzerland. And so somehow hidden in all, hidden in, not in any one person's gene, but it's in a, a group of our genes in aggregate, You're, there's like a hidden map of Europe in there. And that to me is absolutely, like, it's incredible <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's in there. 
Um, but these are the types of questions that, you know, after you've completed a, a degree, let's say you have an interest in biology. I mean, this is the type of thing that a numerical biologist would do, a biostatistician, bioinformaticist, that's the, that's the, the terms for it. But there's a huge growing interest in problems like this. Um, all right, so maybe a little bit, a little bit about uh, the specific majors that we have. So uh, the math major, I've sort of split the coursework up into early, intermediate, and advanced. Um, so the, really the stuff that you should be looking, looking towards as you're entering as a math major um, is this, is the calculus sequence and what's called biomedical statistics. So that's really your, your goal in your first year for sure is to complete calculus one. So if you come in already with a strong pre-calculus background, you can sign just directly up into, into calculus one. If um, you enter with uh, uh, needing to take pre-calculus at the college, we also offer that, um, then you would take it in the spring of your first year. So that's really, I mean, in terms of what you need to get done in your first year, it's, it's really calculus one. If you can do calculus one and calculus two, that's great. Uh, we offer calculus one every semester. We offer calculus two every semester. Calc three we only offer in the spring. Um, so it doesn't really matter whether you, you know, what order you take it in, you won't take calc three uh, until the spring of your sophomore year. So um, in that regard, uh, that's really what you want to try to do. So biomedical statistics, we also offer every semester. So the calculus sequence and biomed stats, those are really the courses you want to try to get through. Um, as, as soon as you can. So calculus two is a, like a prerequisite for most of the more advanced uh, topics in the major, um, or at least a co-requisite. Um, and calculus three is a prerequisite for, for real analysis, which comes later. Um, so after, yeah, after that sort of core four, uh, these intermediate courses, discrete math, linear algebra, computing one, and logic and proof, um, those really, that's like kind of the core of mathematics. Uh, so linear algebra is probably the most important subject in, in math. Um, it really, it's how computers operate basically. Um, so it's, it's a course where you convert a lot of real world problems into arithmetic problems that a computer can do. That's, that's the basic idea. Um, so computing one, you learn a little bit about uh, scientific computing. Discrete math is sort of the counterpart to calculus. Calculus is about, um, you know, smooth cur you know, curves that you can draw, really nice, nice uh, uh, shapes where there's there's nothing jagged about them. Uh, discrete math is about like object, you know, piles of things. You're trying to count things or compute probability, um, look at sort of uh, graphs or computer networks, things like that. That's what discrete math does. Or, sort of operates it. Um, and logic and proof really is an introduction to, it, maybe you took like a proof, did some proofs in your geometry class in high school. Um, the logic and proof is uh, like a, teaches you what real math proofs look like. <laughs> um, the sort of proof style that you learned. Uh, so here's a question from Giovanni. So is, is calculus more difficult than trigonometry? Um, Yes and no. I mean, it's it's uh, that you will use some trigonometry in calculus, like there will be problems related to that. Um, but you'll also be bet you're going to be, yeah. You, I guess in general, the sort of problems as you uh, the problems that you work on as you work through a math degree, they do get harder. They get more sophisticated over time, where. You know, there might be a trigonometry problem will be one step of a calculus problem. Um, but I, I wouldn't say that it's, it's uh, more difficult in a concrete way. It is, it is more sophisticated in that, like, you know, trigonometry that will be part of a problem or uh, solving an equation using exponential functions or logarithms, that will be part of a problem. Um, so it's, but it's not harder in the sense that, you know, I don't know, like that, that you, if you, if you were successful in your pre-calculus class and you, you know, dedicate yourself to the course, you'll do well in your, in a calculus class. There's not, it, it sort of has this reputation for being extremely challenging, but I, I think that's inaccurate. Usually the difficulty is actually the, is the algebra, algebra and trigonometry aspects to it. The calculus part is sort of, 
it, it is sort of easy in a certain sense. <laughs> the hard part is that the algebra is kind of messy. And um, so that's why it's, it is important to have a strong uh, pre-calculus or uh, yeah, trigon trigonometric uh, background. Um, but yeah, it, certainly if you, you know, did pretty well in your, in your pre-calculus class, you should be, you should be able to do pretty well in, in calculus. There's not, uh, it's certainly not a hurdle that, uh, yeah, and, uh, I, if, if anybody who did, anybody who understands pre-calculus can for sure understand calculus. That's the, pre-calculus is the harder, <laughs> is the harder class in my opinion. Um, So yeah, then at the sort of senior level, there's real analysis and abstract algebra is kind of the two, you know, really advanced courses. And then we have a year long capstone sequence um, that usually involves what's called differential equations. Um, and then in addition to that, you take one other math class at the 200 level or higher. But the real key in the, in the major, for, yeah, from the, from the get-go for you um, is gonna be these, these you know, Getting through the getting through the calculus sequence, um, kind of as quickly as you can. If you know, I would say most of our students take uh, calculus one in their second semester. It's maybe a third of students take it um, in their first semester. But there's no. It does it does make your timeline slightly faster if you do it earlier. But you certainly can still graduate without a problem, um, as long as you take calc one in your first year. If you wait until your second year, you might have some, might have some issues. Um, and yeah, biomed staff, you know, if you take Calc 1 in your first semester or second semester, um, I would say take, probably you should take biomed stats in your second semester, um, either at when you're taking Calculus 1 or, or not. But it's also, you can sort of take it, we offer it every semester, so you can take it most, uh, most semesters. Um, <clears throat> So in terms of the, the, the data analytics major, uh, so really you can't, or you probably shouldn't take most of the coursework until you're, until you're the beginning of your sophomore year. Um, so the course you could take in your first year is uh, biomedical stats. So that, that's something you definitely could take in your first year, but you will take these two core um, classes, Math 250, Math 250, 51, uh, Fundamentals of Python and How to Think Like a Data Scientist. These are the, the classes that I mentioned that um, sort of this group of uh, faculty from colleges all, all over the country and Google have been working together uh, to develop. Uh, it's a really, it's actually amazing what, what, what we have been able to, uh, to develop. It's quite, quite a cool class. Um, if I have a little bit of time at the end, I can show sort of one of the types of things that you can do at the end of that year. Uh, but you probably take those as a sophomore. You could take biomedical statistics. I would say probably wait until your second semester. Give yourself a semester to figure out what college is like first. Um, kind of following that up, there's a, another block of kind of three intermediate classes. So you'll take linear algebra, which is the same class that is in the math major. Um, there's a more advanced uh, statistics class. And we also have a required uh, philosophy course on the ethics of data and artificial intelligence. Um, and yeah, that, class, that, that will be offered actually this coming spring. So if you're interested in data analytics, it's also, we have at the college, we have core, core course requirements and philosophy 355 counts as that philosophy core. Um, it's, uh, B4, I think, I don't know. It's, uh, but it, it counts as the core class. So in addition to being a major course, it counts towards the uh, philosophy requirement at the college. Um, but then there's a lot of flexibility beyond that, that you just have to take five more upper level elective courses. Um, they could be from any of these. We're, all, we're also developing more. Um, this coming semester, I'm gonna be teaching a class on sports analytics. So really looking at some some pretty, you know, relatively sophisticated, um, you know, look at sports. So, I mean, a, a bunch of our, we have a really, uh, you know, devoted softball and baseball teams on campus. We also have, uh, you know, basketball teams as Andrew is a former member of. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of our students are, have interest in either baseball slash softball or basketball and, and uh, 
yeah, the students that are signed up, that those are the two sports they're most interested in. Um, and so sort of looking at, um, you know, philosophically what, it, you know, how do you come, you, you have a, a question that you really wanna answer something like, how much should I pay Kevin Durant a year, a year ago after he blew his Achilles tendon, you know, J James Dolan, who owns the Knicks, he sort of had a, uh, he was a little bit worried about paying him the max contract. Ended up, ended up making it so that the Knicks don't have KD. I think he probably would have gone there if, if, uh, if not for, for Dolan's uh, meddling. But it's an, I mean, it's a good question. Is, is it worth it to pay? You're going to pay him $30 million not to play for a year. <laughs> and then he might not be Kevin Durant when he comes back. But how do you, how do you come up with a way to try to answer that question? I mean, is it, how much do you pay this guy? There's no rule book that says you got to do this and this and this. There's, it's an open question. Um, and so that would be like the type of thing that I would like, like to be able to answer or, you know, who was the greatest basketball player of all time, who was the greatest baseball player of all time. You come up with a, with a methodology and you carry it out and see what happens. Um, you know, sort of, if you, especially in baseball, if you sort of look at the, the history of, of how the statistics in that sport looked, They've changed tremendously and they continue just to evolve very quickly all the time, trying to answer a question like, who's the best player? How much, should, you know, is, uh, uh, I don't know, like was David Ortiz overpaid or underpaid? Like, those types of questions. If you're looking at it from the perspective of a front office, those are the questions you want to know. How much do we pay this guy? Should we trade him? Should we, you know, is this guy better than this other guy that we have? Um, it, there's a lot of sort of interesting questions related to that. So that, that's one of these types of courses that are listed in this interdisciplinary uh, courses at the bottom. Um, then in addition, there's more math courses. There's a bunch of business courses that count for it, uh, count towards the, the major. So it's relatively flexible uh, in that regard. Um, and then at the end, there's also a capstone, a capstone course for it. Um, yeah, of course, yeah, sports analytics, I, I don't, there's a, issue in America anyway in our voting system called gerrymandering which involves like how voting districts are drawn on the map uh, you can be very nefarious and draw them to favor one political party or another political party which has happened in a bunch of states recently um, Maryland and uh, and Carolina being kind of the, the two uh, front runners for that Wisconsin also had a really big problem with that. So I would be very interested in looking at uh, developing that kind of a class in the future on the, the mathematics of, uh, of gerrymandering. There's been a whole flurry of activity in data science and math related to that. Uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the two majors in a, you know, five minute, <laughs> five minute introduction to each. Uh, so if there are, yeah, anybody has any questions or anything, I'm happy to, happy to open up the floor. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Uh, Dr. Luthi, uh, just moving forward on that, um, if you could, obviously we see it with the, with the credits and the courses that students will be taking throughout their, throughout their tenure at Mount St. Vincent, what does the, the first semester of freshman year look like for incoming students who may be a math or a data uh, analytics major? Uh, so I think that in your first year, probably the, probably the answer is the same for, for everybody, uh, for all students, all different majors. Uh, you definitely want to try to get a try to get some of the core requirements out of the way. So definitely, you're going to take English 110 and 120 as required for all students. Uh, you should try to take a foreign language, year of foreign language. So either we offer Spanish and French. Uh, we offer Tagalog is another. Uh, it's the language of the Philippines. We have a very large Filipino student population. Um, and. I'm probably missing one Italian. We have Italian as well. So it's that those English 110, 120, your foreign language, you'll take FYE in your first semester, first year experience. I'm teaching one next semester. So probably if you're uh, interested in math or data, data analytics, uh, they'll put you in my FYE section. Um, you should uh, definitely try to take either pre-calculus or calculus one. Um, chances are, if you don't put on your forms that you're interested in math, uh, they'll probably place you in Math 102, which isn't necessarily a terrible thing. You could still go from that to Calculus 1, um, but taking pre-calculus first probably is the, is the way to go. Um, so yeah, either in your first year, pre-calculus in Calculus 1 or Calculus 1 and Calculus 2. Um, you could take Biomedical Statistics as another one. Um, 
and then other courses that you're that you're interested in on top of that. So it's really, I mean, part of the college experience is just exposing yourself to a lot of different coursework, a lot of different uh, ways of thinking about things. So, you know, I have one student who's interested in dance. So you should probably take a dance class. We offer dance class. If you like art, take an art class. If you like science, take a biology or chemistry class. Uh, if you like business, take some business courses. That's, uh, that's really what I would recommend. But for sure in your first year uh, in math, definitely want to take uh, either pre-calculus and calculus one as a, you know, pre-calculus in the fall, calculus one in the spring, or calculus one in the fall and calculus two in the spring, depending on how your, you know, background in pre-calculus and trigonometry um, is. And if you have questions about that, you can feel free to, uh, to send me an email. Um, I'm happy to, happy to, to answer, especially now. I, you know, in some sense, I have literally nothing better to do <laughs> during this pandemic than, uh, uh, than, than, than answer emails. But yeah, that, that to me, in, in terms of the data analytics major, uh, maybe in your, in your first semester, um, you could also, we recommend taking the calculus sequence not required for the uh, major. We also recommend taking the calculus sequence. So you could try to take pre-calculus and calculus one also. Um, probably try to take biomedical statistics in your first year. Um, but again, my, my sort of advice is get used to college. I mean, it'll be your first time, you know, not having somebody telling you what to do. We'll be very much more relaxed. Uh, met fewer, there'll be fewer assignments and they count more. Uh, so really just getting adjusted to that. I mean, I, I know certainly when I went to college, that was a big shift. I mean, your also your kind of relationship with your professors is different when your relationship with your teachers is kind of like, not that they, they're your enemy, but it's like, it's adversarial. They're not, they're not on the same team as you are, I guess. At least when I was in high school, that's how it felt. Whereas in college, it's not like that. Your, your professors, they're not there to hound you, but like you're going to get out of it what you put into it. Uh, uh, so, if if you you know come out come into college, you ha you have that self motivation right off the bat, and you're just devoting yourself to your coursework, uh, you'll be totally fine. But you know most students don't have that experience. Their first semester, they kind of especially in the first first month, they they end up not really adjusting as quite as well to it as as uh, as they could. Um, you know they end up. Uh, falling behind in some classes. I mean, just inevitably that's what happens. So it's better to sort of get acclimated to college, take one or two math classes, uh, and then starting your sophomore year when you kind of understand what the, what the program is like, what, uh, what the college is like, then you shift into that. Thank you for that, Dr. Lupi. And just moving forward as well, you talked about having that relationship with your students and students having it with professors. If you could just talk about um, the ability to connect with you in office hours or literally any time, uh, how free reign uh, students have with professors like yourself to talk about things that are going on in class or even just help in general. Like what, what does that look like for incoming students? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I, almost everybody at the Mount, not just in math, like they're, they are, they enter the teaching profession because they love teaching. I mean, they, and, they're pretty much available. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm on campus until six or seven on the regular. You know, then I'll I'll go to the gym afterwards. I'll see Andrew there or some of my other students there. But, uh, but yeah, we're just sort of, we're here quite a bit. I mean, you know, some professors are maybe here earlier in the day than later in the day. Uh, yeah, we're pretty much here. I mean, we're available. Like, uh, you know, most students honestly don't take advantage of it. They kind of they go to class. They go home, they don't go to office hours. Office hours, yeah, your office hours, your professors will have. I mean, you could be, you could talk about cut topics in class, but maybe you're kind of, inter you're interested in business, but you don't, I mean, you're, you know, you're 18, 17, 18, 19 years old. You maybe don't really know what the landscape is like. Like, what does a job in business look like? If you want this type of job, what should you be doing? Um, and so you, you should, that's something you could talk to your professor about and they're, we're happy to do so. Like, uh, and that's really where the, you know, your, you're gonna get, I mean, where ex, you know, I spent years, you know, sort of developing my abilities in math. We have a lot of experience and we, uh, you know, we're, yeah, we're, we are happy to share it. Uh, 
almost yeah i mean my colleague uh, amir is i mean he's on he basically lives on campus <laughs> he doesn't he lives you know he walks to and from school he lives in riverdale um He's there on Saturdays and Sundays if you know if, if students need that. I know there's another professor in the biology department, um, uh, Annie Visvicky, who's a yeah, biology professor. She's I mean I've seen her on campus on Saturdays. I mean they're the faculty by and large they're here to help you succeed, um, and so yeah I would say sort of take advantage um, take advantage of that if if, uh, if possible. Um, do have so the internships. Questions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in, in terms of, uh, internships, we had, um, one student go, uh, that did one with, uh, I think he was, he worked in the accounting office for, I don't think it was the fire department of the city. It might've been with Yonkers, um, who did an inter internship. Honestly, most of our students going to teaching. Um, if you're under, if you have an interest specifically in, um, uh, we have one student who did an internship at IBM um, this past year actually. Um, so yeah, we, de we definitely have them. It's sort of, I mean, it's kind of a hard question to answer because usually uh, it's, yeah, you have some sort of secondary interest. So you're interested in, I don't know, yeah, technology, or you're interested in finance, or you're interested in data science, or something that sort of enables you to uh, to work with an in, you know some a partner in in, in industry. Um, I have some friends uh, that are managers at like digital marketing firms uh, in the city. Um, so there's yeah, there definitely there definitely are opportunities, especially um, being in New York. There's just I don't know. That's like one of the unique. <laughs> you know, I went to college in New London, Connecticut. There's, there was, uh, there were a few companies there. There was one that did uh, Sonalist. They studied, uh, they developed sonar for the Navy. There's a big naval base in the nuclear submarine base actually uh, there. Um, but you know, your options are sort of limited. Whereas at, at uh, yeah, New York City, you sort of have much bigger access. Um, so yeah, the truth is we don't have a huge number of students that do them simply because most of our majors are interested in teaching. So they're doing student teaching, almost all of them. I will say essentially all of our majors, they graduate in four years, they get out, either get a job right out of college or they go into graduate school. And that's, I mean, we have a very high placement in that regard. So, uh, but yeah, if, if you have an interest in, you know, in math and maybe you sort of lean towards a particular, you're interested in technology or medicine or something like that, um, we for sure could, could, uh, could connect you with uh, uh, people to do that. We, uh, Amir Nignajad, one of my colleague, he has regular, he has a research collaboration with a group in Germany, in Berlin, at the Susi Institute in, in Berlin. I think it's affiliated with the Free University there. Um, and so he's brought several students, you know, and basically every summer he brings one or two students with him. Uh, unfortunately, not, probably not going this summer <laughs> uh, because of the, uh, the virus, but um, yeah, he, is, he routinely has brought uh, one or two students there, um, so you can sort of view that as an as an internship too. I mean, um, and a you know kind of a nice travel opportunity to go to Europe. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely definitely um, opportunities there. Um, yeah, if if a student is interested in. Absolutely, thank you for that, Dr. Ruthie. Uh, I do have one last question that I wanted to ask you. You you hit on it uh, briefly and talked about the passion for teaching and helping others. Uh, understand math and you know pursue their passion whatever that may be do you have one uh student experience or course or class experience from your tenure at Mount St. Vincent where you were like that was like kind of like the aha moment for you in a sense and, and saying wow like this this is really fulfilling and I'm glad they got this or, or he or she understood this like what have you had one of those feelings or moments definitely yeah this uh I mean certainly the one that jumps into mind is actually from you know I, I taught this for the first time this past year, this um, sort of core sequence in data in data analytics. So first semester in programming, second semester in data science. Um, and I just had one, uh, actually two, two students in that class. So we have a, a opportunity program, the HEOP 
fiat program at the college. Um, and so usually that program, it's, you know, by and large, it's students that are not, they're not coming from affluent backgrounds. And generally speaking, they're, you know, they didn't go, to, they didn't go to live in neighborhoods that had amazing high schools or anything like that. Um, and yeah, so it was, you know, I had students in, that were in that program and they, you know, so they're, they're coming in with, you know, humble beginnings, I guess, let's put it that way. They're, they're not coming in, having taken a whole bunch of, you know, uh, courses, courses over the summer or done internships or, you know, they don't have like connect, a huge amount of connections um, to the, you know, world of computer science. Um, but really what, well, I mean, it was like at the end of that, the first year, like one of the best students was, was somebody from HEOP. I mean, it's really somebody who come, you know, started from the bottom and now he's at the top. I mean, it's like that, that is great. I mean, it really is, you know, like if I went into finance, I could go work in finance and make like three times what I make now. I mean, it's that, that it, it's really that those are the moments that sort of get me into teaching that keep, you know, that I'm interested in. It's not, I'm not doing this to get rich. It's because I really, I like doing it. I like seeing people succeed, um, I, you know, and, and especially at the Mount, we, I mean, we have students that they do incredible things over four, over the course of four years. Really, I mean, really, you know, yeah, Cornell University, there's just getting in, if you can get into Cornell, you're good. <laughs> you know, it doesn't really matter what you do for four years. You could be a C student at Cornell and you'll probably, you probably you'll do okay. Uh, but yeah, at the Mount, it's really, you know, much more rewarding as a teacher that it's, you know, students that, that uh, they're really picking themselves up. And, you know, most students are not coming here, you know, from a super affluent background or anything like that. That's awesome, Dr. Luthi. Thank you for that perspective and, you know, having those moments with your students. If you could give, you know, in your closing remarks now, uh, thank you for all your information and your presentation on both math and data analytics. If you could give one piece of advice for the incoming class of 2024, obviously ending high school um, pretty earlier than they expected, coming into a new fresh start in a sense, um, one piece of advice for them and their families, what, what would that be from you? It's uh, a good question. So it's, it's uh, to me, so like, how, you know, how I got really good at math, like how did I end up going to graduate school in mathematics and majoring in mathematics and in college, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I, and it wasn't just like, oh, I did my coursework in class and then I was done. Like, you know, I, I played my fair share of Nintendo and PlayStation too, but like I, I was like reading math books a little bit on the side. So like, you know, you can sort of figure out, I'm happy to share the textbooks that, that we use in calculus. It's a free text. I mean, the one that I use is, a free online textbook. Um, it's just a PDF you can download. So I'm happy to happy to share that, but just sort of look over it. You know, just, you know, not that you have to like read the whole book or anything, but try to spend a little bit, a little bit of your free time, you know, especially now it's maybe a little bit easier because there's not as much to do, <laughs> but use a little bit of your free time. Uh, just do a little bit of math. I mean, that's the, uh, the, the key thing is sort of just, yeah, try to, uh, do a little bit, you, it, yeah. Another uh, big piece of advice, especially going into the fall, is one of the the I think reasons that uh, Americans in general don't really like math very much, or they. You know, I get a, a most common answer when I say that I'm a mathematician is, "Oh, I hated math in high school." <laughs> um, and the the reality is just that math is it's challenging even if you're really good at it, it's still not easy. It's, it's like, uh, I liken it to running a marathon. If you ask a marathon runner, if they love to run, the answer is yes. They're gonna say, of course I do, I love to run. If you ask a marathon runner if it's easy to run a marathon, they're not gonna say yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm sure Andrew can talk about basketball, like love playing basketball. It's like the practices probably aren't, it's not that much fun to run suicides on, you know, run up and down the, the court uh, multiple times, but. Um, yeah, it's that sort of challenge. The, the difference with math, I guess, with, with basketball, you sort of feel physically different. When you're running, if you can run a marathon, there's like a physical changes in your body. Whereas in, with math, it's like running a marathon. I mean, it's like we're training for a marathon. You don't feel like you're getting better. <laughs> Even, it just constantly feels like it's hard because 
as you're getting better, the problems are getting harder. And so you're just kind of, it's kind of like you're running on the treadmill and somebody's pushing up on the, on the speed and you kind of, you don't, you never, it feels like it's hard all the time. Uh, but yeah, that's the, the, but you don't necessarily notice the progress in yourself. So, so the key, really the key thing is to just remember that the thing, it will be hard. Um, but over time you are genuinely are, are, are getting better at it. Uh, yeah, just stay, try to stay positive, I guess, too. <laughs> Absolutely. What, what a great way to end it. Stay positive, uh, end all be all. Um, Dr. Luthi, thank you so much for your time and helping our incoming students understand more about the math and data analytics majors that we offer at the College of Mount St. Vincent. And thank you to everyone that has tuned in, whether you're here on the webinar, Instagram Live, or Facebook Live in our group. Uh, we'll continue to you know, help you guys with any other information you may need. And for students who are probably watching this at a later date, uh, Dr. Luthi, if you could provide your email, if they have any questions about you know, math or data analytics, feel free. Yep, it's that. Yeah, so it's peter.luthi at mountsaintvincent.edu. So it's, uh, um, I'm ha happy to answer any emails. Um, yeah, looking forward to having everybody at the mountain. Thanks, Andrew, for organizing this. Absolutely. Hope everyone has a great evening. And thank you, Peter. Appreciate it. Take care. Take care.